So we all know that graphics card prices are through the roof right now. Some people are saying that it's a terrible time to get into PC gaming. Some people want the cryptocurrency market to crash. And worst of all, some people are saying that it's time to switch back to consoles. No, 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 hold up. There are still some solid budget graphics cards out there that will still get the job done. Let me show you. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today I'm gonna to be showing you three solid budget graphics card options while you either wait for these prices to get back to normal, wait to snipe a good deal, or just wait for the next generation from Nvidia or AMD. The three graphics cards that I'll be showing and benchmarking today are actually three of the top four most popular graphics cards on the Steam hardware survey. The number one most popular graphics card by Steam users right now is the GTX 1060, and that used to be a heck of a sweet spot for price to performance, but I'm Honestly, the price is just way too high right now to even consider a budget graphics card. So moving down the list, the second most popular card is the GTX 960, followed by the 750 Ti, and then the 1050 Ti. We'll be reviewing all three of these today. What's crazy to me is that over 30% of Steam users own one of these three cards. There are dozens of graphics cards out there, so these must be worth it, right? Before we get into benchmarking though, let's quickly talk about price. The GTX 960 is only one generation behind the current gen, and I found that in the past week on eBay they've sold for anywhere from $50 all the way up to $150, but it seems that the average is right around that $85 range. The GTX 750 Ti is now two generations behind the current gen, it's selling anywhere from $50 to $100, but I honestly wouldn't pay more than about $65 for this card because a ton of people had these back in the day and a lot of them are being sold now. And finally, the GTX GTX 1050 Ti is a current generation card, so it'll probably be tough to find used. I personally paid $150 for mine when it first came out and it was always at MSRP, but at the time of making this video, it will be tough to find it new for even less than $200. Now remember, those prices that I just gave you could easily double next week or even be cut in half next week, so don't go crazy in the comments section about the current price. The only thing that we're here to do today is see how these can play some current games. For testing, we're gonna be going back to my test bench which I featured last week when I reviewed that Arctic CPU cooler. And this is rocking an i7-4790K overclock to 4.4 gigahertz, 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, an MSI Gaming 5 motherboard, and all of the games are installed on a Samsung 840 EVO SSD. Now yes, I do realize that my test bench is a little outdated at this point. I definitely could have put all of these graphics cards in that beast behind me with the 87 700k but I feel like this test bench is a little bit more realistic. Most people that are buying these budget graphics cards, especially the used ones, aren't gonna have a super insane CPU, so I feel like this is a good match. Also keep an eye out for my updated benchmarking metrics, as I am now including 1% and 0.1% lows instead of min and max frame rates. For those of you that don't understand those metrics, I'll have some videos linked down below, but I'm sure most of you probably know it by now. I'm actually a little late to the party. I probably should have included it in some recent videos, but at least we have them now. Alright, so the first game of the benchmark had to be an easy one, so I started with CSGO. I was actually able to keep the settings the same across all three graphics cards, and you can see that the GTX 960 actually slightly outperformed the 1050 Ti. The 750 Ti could certainly keep up with these graphics settings, although if you do want a little bit more consistency with those lows, you could bump it down to medium and you'd be set. The next benchmark was PUBG, which you guys probably know by now is a very CPU intensive game. I honestly don't like putting this game in my graphics card benchmarking videos, but since it's so popular and I would have got asked a bunch of time in the comments, I had to include it. I think a good sweet spot with the 1050 Ti and 960 is 1080p and medium. They performed almost identically and for the 750 Ti I had to bump it down to very low but we still got a solid 61 FPS average with some tight frame rates. Next up was Overwatch. The 960 and 1050 Ti could handle 1080p ultra with the resolution scale locked to 100%. There's still only a margin of error in between them and for the 750 Ti I bumped it down to 1080p medium and got some solid Solid settings. Be aware that if you were gaming on a 144Hz monitor, you could drop the settings on any of these cards and get those higher frame rates. The next benchmark was Call of Duty World War II, which may be a surprise to those who haven't played it yet. We all know the hate that COD gets every year, but the graphics this year specifically are pretty demanding and the game actually looks very nice. For all three cards, I kept it at 1080p in extra settings, and you can see that we averaged over 100 FPS on the 960 and 1050 Ti, and the 750 Ti could still hold strong at 66 FPS. 
this. And finally, the last benchmark was Assassin's Creed Origins, only because this game is very demanding to run, one of the most demanding games honestly right now, and it included an in-game benchmarking tool which makes it easier for me. The 1050 Ti 960 sweet spot was at 1080p and medium, you definitely could knock it down too low to get closer to that 60fps mark, and the 750 Ti definitely struggled to hang even at 1080p low, but like I said, this is a pretty demanding benchmark. So with all those benchmarks, I think it's pretty safe to say that all three of these cards are performing very well in their price range. I would personally say the sweet spot is the GTX 960, only because the 1050 Ti is going to be pretty tough to get at a good price, but even if you can only afford the 750 Ti, you're still good to go in 2018. Please don't let all these crazy prices sway you away from getting into PC gaming, you can still certainly build a solid gaming PC at a budget price, you might just have to snipe some deals. Well that wraps up my review slash benchmark of the top 3 most popular graphics cards. Make sure you guys let me know down in the comment section if you're going to pick one of these up, or what graphics card I should look at next. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please drop a like down below to help support my channel. And as always, thank you for watching and please subscribe for more Zach's Tech Turf videos.